and welcome to another video. So today I am really excited to be sharing with you my April setup in my reading journal. So this is an A5 Archer and Olive that I have been using as an art journal. So I got it during their Black Friday sale just to try out the notebook, experiment with watercolor, do some hand lettering. And then over the course of that transition between the old year and the new year, when lots of people release setup videos and planner lineups and things like that, I did find a lot of reading journal videos. And that really made me want to create one. And so I've been experimenting with it in March and decided to do a full thorough setup in April. So here on the screen, I have just been showing you the various supplies that I'm working with. I'm going with a cherry blossom theme because I have this really nifty bullet journal kit from Planning with Kay and I'm going to combine and supplement it with some stickers from the Happy Planner. I've got a collection of Crayola Super Tips, a brush pen, a white gel pen, a black gel pen, and like an eraser that I'm going to be working with for this spread and setup. And as you can see here, I did sketch in my April cover page kind of header thing already because I really wanted to experiment with this new type of font. I don't usually do serif fonts. I do a lot of brush lettering cursive script kind of stuff. And so I really wanted to experiment with some more serif things. And so as you can see here, that's what I've done. And as I go through this process some more, I am going to enter a time lapse so that this video isn't hours long as it took me to do this setup. It was pretty, it was pretty time consuming, but it was also a fun time. All right, so I've got this sped up to five times speed. I'm going to see how that works. Usually when I do time-lapse videos, I stick to around three times speed. If I do the time-lapse too, too fast, my computer can't really keep up with it. And so things get disjointed between where my voiceover is and where the video actually is. My preview doesn't match up to where the timeline is and things get weird, but because this is me drawing and setting up a lot of stuff, I felt like three times speed was going to be too slow. So let me know what you think of this five times speed. I'm going to do my best to sync things up, but we'll just kind of play it by ear. So to outline the lettering here, I am using a Sakura Pigma Micron pen. I'm actually using a micro perm, I think it's what it's called. So this is technically a permanent marker. I got it in a Simply Gilded subscription box but it was the only black fine liner I had at the time. I have owned a set of Sakura Pigma Microns, the non-permanent ones, but the ones that I've had, I've had for a while, and so the nibs are getting frayed, some of them are out of ink, and like it's a whole mess. So I have recently bought a new set, but when I did this setup, I didn't have it. I say all that to say that this is an alcohol-based permanent pen, so there's a touch of ghosting and like almost bleed through that would not be there with any regular pen. If you know anything about the Archer and Olive notebooks, then you'll know that they have a really thick paper. 160 GSM, bright white, really nice paper. And I was actually pretty skeptical when I first decided to try an Archer and Olive notebook because I don't really like super thick paper. The thickest paper I've ever tried was I think 120 GSM, technically and it was by Limome, and I hated it. It was super thick, very rough, and an off-white yellow ivory color, and I just did not like it. And that kind of put me off thick paper in a bullet journal since. Have not enjoyed it. I've always gone for something thinner. I My last bullet journal, when I did bullet journaling extensively, was a Latrim, and that has like 90 GSM paper, almost half as thick. So like, I was not expecting to love the Archer and Olive notebooks as much as I do. One thing that I really, really appreciate about the Archer and Olive notebooks that I was not expecting and what really does it for me is how smooth the paper is. Now it's not like ultra slick smooth like plum paper, paper, but it's smooth. It's not gritty and I really like that and that makes the thickness bearable for me. Like, it's not too thick. I can still flip through my book. Like, I love the feeling of flipping through completed spreads. Like, you know, when you fan pages and just kind of let them run through your thumb. Like, that's so much fun. And with a really thick papered notebook, sometimes it's harder to get that same effect. So, really, really love this one. 
and I've just been impressed and surprised. So while I was talking, I did finish my April cover page. I just did the lettering in purple with some flowers around it. And now I am going to be lettering in my TBR spread. I don't fill it in in this video because when I did this setup, I had not really finished the month of March yet. It was like halfway through March and I wasn't quite sure what books I will have finished in March and what books I will want to read in April. But this is the setup. I'm using these cherry blossom flowers and this banner sticker from the Planning with K bullet journal kit in order to make like bullet points for my TBR list. This is a really simple spread, but I do I decided to go with these like dotted lines instead of making straight like solid lines here and I really like how it adds just a little bit more dimension to this spread. And then before I was talking about my spreads, I think I was going on and on about my new love for Archer and Olive, so you'll see more of them on my channel. I have been experimenting a lot with the kinds of videos that I want to do. I'm really trying to limit myself to about one a week so that I do not get too overwhelmed. And I think that these reading journal setups are something you can probably expect to see fairly regularly from me, at least for the near future. Here I am setting up a monthly spread, just a single page to mark some read-alongs that I want to keep note of. I don't know that I'm going to exp um, actually participate in every single one of them. In fact, the very last one, I know I probably won't realistically have the time to do, but it'll all work out. So I am making these boxes three squares wide by four, five squares tall, I think. And so I'm just kind of outlining that and trying to figure out what I want to use to mark my days of the week because this was really, really thin. Anytime I've ever bullet journaled, I have never done a single page monthly. It is too small for most of the things that I have going on. I use monthly views to track all of my bills all of my meetings, any important events, birthdays, things like that. It's a really quick at a glance for me and it holds everything, deadlines at work, all of that. So it gets pretty busy. And so that does mean that a one page is usually not enough, not when I am using a bullet journal kind of system functionally. But for something like this, where I'm just tracking a couple of reading events at a time, I thought that this one page would work quite well. And so far, it is. I really like how the spread came out. As you can see here, I decided to go with these alphabet stickers that are in the Happy Planner Memory Keeping sticker book. I decided to layer them with some loose florals from the Planning with K kit. This is page number three in her kit. It's always a decorative page and it's just, I like how it came out. All right, and I'm now going in with these super tips to kind of color in the bar where I will write the dates in and I've picked three colors going off of the colors that coordinated I think best with the planning with K kit depending on what colors I had available so I think Crayola has like color names for their super tips I don't know what they are I put my own numbering system on them so every cap on my Crayola super tips has a number in sharpie that I have covered with a piece of clear tape to protect it. And that is how I refer to all of my markers. So I've got multiple color codes. I've swatched them like a hundred times. I know this set really well. I've had it for several years. A couple of my pens are actually starting to dry out and I'm going to need to get new ones soon. <sighs> it's been a while. I've had them for like three years. So they're really good, highly recommend. But that means that I don't know exactly what colors I used. It's like a, oops. I'm like waving around a marker while I'm doing this voiceover and one flew out of my hand. But anyway, it's like a lavender purpley color, a pink and a blue. After my monthly spread, I create a spread for a reading log. This is probably my favorite spread. I find it the most useful. I love it so much. It's like, it's basically the same kind of reading log that you had in like elementary school, you know, when you're first learning how to read and you're assigned like 20 minutes of reading a day or something like that. And then you have to get your parents to sign it and stuff. It's basically like that. I've assigned myself 
reading every day and it's fun because it lets me keep track of my pages read which is one of my reading goals for this year and I tried for a while to keep track of this on a spreadsheet but honestly it's just I don't carry around something that lets me easily access a spreadsheet regularly like I tried to put Google Sheets on my cell phone as an app and I hate it so I just wasn't updating it I wasn't keeping up with it but I made a reading vlog like this in March as you can see right there and I have actually been using it and so I'm keeping track of my pages read I'm keeping track in here of when I start and finish a book and I really really enjoy it so this is what it is I make two lines per day and that's because I read maybe two books a day so typically I'm reading a book that I'm reading just by myself and then most days I also read whatever it is that I'm reading with my boyfriend at the time and so I wanted to have two lines there so that I could mark the pages I'm reading in the book that I'm reading by myself and I can mark the pages in the book that I'm reading with my boyfriend. The sections that I've got outlined here are a space for the date, a space for the book that I'm reading on that particular day, a space for the page I started with, a page that I ended with, and then the total pages read that day. So that's what I've got going on here. And then I'm coloring in the date boxes in my three color color scheme, just kind of alternating. As you can see over there on the left, I did make a mistake and I put two pinks where I should not have, but it works out when it's, when it's all filled in, you can barely tell. I was really bummed though as I finished this spread because this pink that I have, it's probably my favorite pink in the set, probably my favorite color in the set. Um, for more context, this is the Crayola Super Tips 50 pack set, so not the 100 and not the 24 I think is their other set, but the 50. And I love this color, which is in part why it started to dry out while I did this setup and that made me so sad because I, I can't really use it. I had to really press really hard and give it frequent breaks to finish out this whole setup so I really need to refresh that color but you know Crayola is not like a super fancy brand so they don't sell their colors individually as far as I know so I've got to hunt down another 50 pack but they're pretty cheap so having a set of backups is something I hope to acquire soon especially for that pink color because I miss it. I've used it for like highlighting and stuff in the past especially when I was doing readings in college so that's why it's it's drying out. Now I'm going in with my brush pen to add the dates. And I say it now, but as you can see, I actually got out of sync because my computer is slow. But anyway, that's what I wrote the dates in. And now I'm going in at the top to add even more flowers on either side of the banner I have that just says reading vlog. And I've combined lots of different types of flowers, lots of different styles of flower, and I really like it because we've got the cherry blossoms from the Planning with Cake kit that are in her art style. We've got the cherry blossoms that are in the Happy Planner sticker book in their art style. And then this other set of like pink flowers that are like roses and some buds. And so it's a completely different kind of flower. It's not even a cherry blossom, but I don't know. It was really pretty. I thought they complemented each other. So there's that. And I'm starting to work on weekly pages and you've got this long pause because I went to go find washi tapes that I thought would complement this setup. One of the things that I found I missed doing when I started to work in my novel companion and using my happy planner horizontal just for like journaling and memory keeping is that I do like to have the option to write just a little bit like a line or two about what I'm reading that day. I want to be able to mark like when I get to really crazy pieces in a book or places that I really loved and things like that. I want to be able to come in and mark like April 10th I read that this happened in this series for the first time and it blew my mind. That kind of thing. So I am going to add weekly pages in this setup. This is not something I did in March. Well I did it towards the end of March. But for April I want to have the whole month in here and the layout is really simple. It's a week a page because I don't need a lot of space. This is not like a functional planner situation. All of my plans won't be getting in here, no to-do lists, nothing like that. So I'm just going to make a really simple horizontal weekly setup where each day is given five lines and it's just marked horizontally. But 
Then I wanted to add a bit of embellishment. So as you can see here, I put a lot of flowers down the center spine, which I really, really liked. And then I'm layering some washi tape in the corners. And this is this two page spread here for the first and second week of April is probably my favorite of the two spreads that I set up. So I set up enough spreads for four weeks and this is my favorite of the different spreads. I just really like all the flowers in the middle. You can really see how I mixed all the different art styles of these pink florals. I've got roses layered with cherry blossoms, layered with happy planner, layered with planning with K, and I love it. So that's what this spread's about. I'm dividing things and I'm going to be layering some large number stickers from the happy planner memory keeping dates and holidays sticker book with the single letter days of the week stickers from the planning with k monthly kit the washi tape that i used in this setup was a light purple that i got off of amazon it came in a set i think it was from m and t I think is the name of the company and then a 10 millimeter simply gilded bow washi that I got in a subscription box I think it was the one of the recent peach theme ones it was like spring of last year March maybe April when I got this washi deep so I put that all up in the corners and just really really like this spread I'm so excited to use this setup I'm doing this voiceover at the end of March the 26th so April is right around the corner and Ugh, I'm so excited. I don't know. I just really, really, really love the spring. My mood has just, it's improved with the number of daylight hours we have. I'm sure I'm not the only one that feels like that. I'm, I'm just so excited. So this spread is also, it has lots of my favorite colors, pinks and flowers, and ugh, so excited to use this setup. So I've got another two page setup of weeklies here, and I wanted to put do all my weeklies at once just so that they would all be in one place because I... Uh, I do a lot of freeform journaling in this journal, like I don't typically have a lot of, like I don't worry about if things are in order or not, or if things are all together or not, but this one instance I was like, okay, let me try to be a little more organized with how this is laid out. So I wanted to have all the weeks all together and just do them all at once because I also knew that I wanted to take my time with these spreads and the day that I was filming I had the time to do so. And that's not always the case. So if I left this for later, it probably would not get done. And I really wanted to have a few nice weekly pages. So for these weeks, I'm using more stickers from the Planning with K kit. I'm using the ones that have the days of the week with the cherry blossoms on it, as well as her set of banners that go from purple to pink. Still using the large number stickers from the Happy Planner. And then I'm going to letter in the days of the week on top of these banners with my brush pen. I've had this brush pen for a really long time. It is one of the Tombow Fudenusuke pens. I don't know if this is the hard or the soft tip. I can't remember. I, I got a pack of both of them, but I don't know which one this is. Nevertheless, I've had this set for a while and it's really good. I think one of them started to run out of ink. I don't know which one, but the other one works perfectly fine and I've just kind of gotten used to both of them by now, so I work well with both of them and don't bother to distinguish between the two anymore. But this type of stuff that I'm using, these pens, the super tips, this planning with K monthly kit, like these are things that I've had since I've started bullet journaling and just kind of keep on hand and occasionally go back to over the years. I think I have been planning for three to four years now as like a hobby. And there are certain things that I always come back to. Bullet journaling is one of them. And it, it doesn't always work with what I've got going on in my life, like my job. And the kinds of commitments and things that I have at any given time. But it, it's something that I like to come back to. And so finding this community of people who do bullet journals just for reading was really exciting for me. Because I missed journaling but also find that it's not it's not functional for me like it doesn't it's not something that can typically I can typically be bothered with when I am worried about like dates 
for when grades are due and the to-do list of things I have for work and if I need to do my laundry and things like that. Like, I like journaling for the artistic aspect of it. And so for the functionality, I want something much simpler. And that's why I have my Happy Planner because it just, it holds everything that I need in one place, fairly compact, all set up, and I can just kind of roll from week to week. For something like this, however, I really like the option of being more decorative when I have the time or not doing anything at all when I don't have the time and not having to worry about a deadline or a to-do or an important task slipping through the cracks because this is just for fun. Like this whole notebook I bought just to experiment with and play with and do art in and I'm really having a lot of fun with it. While I was doing that, I did set up these two pages with my last two banner stickers from the Planning with Kate kit. One to mark my day's red and one for the best book. This day's red spread I've seen in a lot of setups. I've used it twice now and I actually think I'm going to change it next month. So it just has 1 through 30 boxes for the days of the month and I fill in the days that I read. Now, I read most days so like this chart gets pretty discolored in and what I didn't want to have was just a big calendar that ended up being colored in one color because I read every single day. So I do have this color code that I've seen other people do between if you're reading a print book, an audiobook, or both on a particular day. Now, what I have found is that I don't actually read audiobooks all that often. I have one just kind of hanging out in the background for when I want to do some art quietly or maybe work on a puzzle, but it's not something I do regularly. So basically, these calendars have just been all colored in with the print. And so what I want to do next month is actually color code not for this type of books that I read because it's always print and it's either like physical or ebook but like never audio almost ever. So I want to start color coding for what type of reading I'm doing. So on what days do I get to read for myself? What days am I reading whatever book it is that I'm reading with my boyfriend? What days do I do neither? What days do I do both? That kind of reading I think might be more interesting to me to track than if I do a print or an audiobook because it's almost always a print book. Then I also made a page to mark, put just the cover uh, cover image for the best book of the month, whatever that is. And elsewhere in my journal, I do make full like collage spreads for whatever my favorite book of the month was, but I wanted to have just a page so that it could be like a like a little award plaque page to highlight the best book I read that month. I also went through to add a few more stickers in various places. I don't like leaving just one or two stickers on a page, so whenever possible, I will just use them all. And so I did use the two sheets I pulled from the Happy Planner sticker book throughout this setup. And so now we're moving into a couple of spreads that I'm making for read-alongs that are happening in April that I want to be a part of or at least keep on my radar. So the first is for the This Golden Flame by Emily Victoria. This was a fairy loot book. This was the February one, I think. And it is, there's going to be a read-along for it in April. So I took this character art that came in my box. There's technically an author letter on the back. I never really pay attention to those. So I took the, uh, like, the print and I glued it into my journal so that the character for this book would be like the center page of this spread where I'm going to put the days that the read along are happening and then the chapters that they're reading each day. Sometimes I, I've done this before, I did a page for this or similar to this in March and I don't always end up participating in the read along when I plan to, but I wanted to have this here so that I knew that it happened so that I can reference it if I find that I have the time to participate and as a place to actively use some of this character art because I find that right now I have them stored in a binder and like I don't I don't ever look in that binder so I don't get to see it at the same time I have previously had my fairy loot character art kind of taped up onto the walls and that also I didn't like because it made my workspace feel cluttered because there were lots of patterns, lots of people, lots of art styles all over the walls. So I decided to like just put them in this journal. This is my reading journal. This is a bookish art print and so I'm just going to glue it in here and that's what I did and it felt pretty like I was nervous to do something so permanent 
with this art print, but at the end of the day, I like how it turned out. I used some black origami paper to write the title, This Golden Flame. I tried to mimic the kind of lettering that is on the cover itself. It has a lot of these like little curly flourishes, and then I just kind of ripped it to add some dimension and glue it up at the top with my glue tape runner thingamajig. And then I added this little, it's off screen right now, I think I center it here shortly, but I added a little black square to put the days that the readathon is happening, or the read-along, and then later, once I find wherever they post what's being read on each day, I'll come back and fill that in. And this was fun. The origami paper is pretty slick. So it took a while for the gold to dry, and I smudged a couple of things here and there, but it worked out. Some of the washi tape I used for that spread is also really old. I got it from Michaels maybe two or three years ago, and so it is starting to be less sticky, which is why you saw me like taping the back of it for like so that it wouldn't come off. On the other side, there's one more read-along that I am interested in participating in and it is for Air of Fire. So Aelin's Kingdom is a, an account on Instagram and they are hosting, maybe co-hosting, a read-along of the Throne of Glass series. They did it to uh, following their A uh, Court of Thorns and Roses one. They did one to prep for the release of A Court of Silver Flames and then decided to also do one for Throne of Glass. Well, I haven't finished reading Throne of Glass, so I'm actually on Air of Fire, so I figured I would just kind of hop in to this read-along and see how much of it I can keep up with. So at the time that I was doing this, I thought that I would be able to keep up with Air of Fire and Queen of Shadows and do both in April. That's not realistic, like not at all. So in April, I'm really only going to shoot for Air of Fire. And so here I am making this spread to mark what that read-along is going to look like and it's I chose this style to mimic and match one that I did for the Assassin's Blade which they also did a read-along of and I sort of participated in that I was kind of slow so I didn't start until like the middle of the week the read-along was happening and then took an extra week to finish it but it pushed me to actually pick up this book that I've been meaning to read for a year so that's why I'm putting this spread here and I did a similar style for the Assassin's Blade that I am doing for Air of Fire. I am once again playing with these serif fonts, and I write that it's taking place from April 15th through the 18th. That is not two weeks. That is not a two week long read along. <laughs> it's April 5th through the 18th. So that's like, that's a mistake that I only notice when I start numbering my days of the week here in a little bit because I realized that I went from 15 and then suddenly I was at 21 and I knew that the read-along stopped on the 18th and I got confused and had to go back and figure out what I had done wrong. So you also saw me pull out some yellow origami paper. I have this pack of origami paper that I bought to make corner bookmarks and I made a handful of them but then I just kind of have a lot of the paper. I don't do that much origami but I really like it for layering because it's really thin. So it didn't bulk up my journal too much and I had it in a lot of colors. So I am coloring this page based on the cover of Air of Fire, which is like mostly green with like hints of yellow in it. So that's why I picked this yellow to layer with that black. And then I've got this green, solid green washi tape that I'm going to layer with a green with silver sparkle washi tape that I got from Creating & Co. And I'm doing all this layering to give my gel pen time to dry before I color in the title and erase my pencil lines and all of that. I use a bright green Crayola Super Tip to color in the main part of the letters. And the flourishes on the side are meant to mimic the ones that are on the cover. I, I kind of did it, but I don't know. They're not as good as the ones on the cover, but I wasn't sure. They were really hard for me to draw, so I did my best. And then I'm going in with a gray to add a bit of a drop shadow, just to add some more dimension to my lettering. And then I will, in the bottom section, I've got two columns where I'm going to be writing the days of the week, the dates that the read-along are happening, and then the chapters that are being read on any given day. Now, 
I did a lot of reading in March because I was on spring break. I work in April. I work nonstop in April. And what I mean by nonstop is that usually, especially these last few months, the school schedule is broken up by the occasional break. Like there's an extra day, a long weekend, a late start, a holiday. Something happens so that we're not doing five days of school a week every single week for like a really long time and in April that's not the case. April through May basically until the end of the year there is nothing happening except regular school days and so I'm not gonna have time to read nearly as much. So I do not anticipate I will be able to fully commit to keeping up with this schedule but like I said I wanted to have it here because it will at the very least push me to pick up this book that I've been reading or wanting to read for a very long time. And now I'm going to do my very last spread and honestly I don't know how the audio syncing is going to be because as the video gets longer and there's more stuff that my computer has to process it gets worse and worse <laughs> so bear with me but my last spread is a really quick wrap-up page I found in March that there was a setup I really liked where I just make a table where I can mark the book that I read when I started the book when I finished the book what my rating was and then a quick little graph at the bottom to keep track of my pages read super simple very quick loved this particular layout in March and decided to continue to use it in April and at this point I was really quite tired of setting things up I actually did this spread a few days later maybe a, even a week or two later than all the rest so I was tired and I decided to make this really simple just drew in my table filled in the words and used one color this blue that I didn't think I got to use too much in my like main setup section and so yeah, that's basically the spread. And so I'm going to go in now and show you a full flip through of all the things going on. And I think I'm also going to include some of my March pages as well. So with this all done, I'm going to go all the way to the beginning of March. Actually, the beginning of my reading journal because I haven't shown you these pages yet either. So I've got just my title page, an experiment with video tracking, a spread to keep track of my Goodreads goal, and then March. Like the setup for this was super simple. A TBR, my days read, what my reading log is shaping up to look like, space for the best book, the Assassin's Blade read-along, the weeklies, my March wrap-up, and then some pages that I've read for or that I've put together for the books I've already read extra pages for books I anticipate reading and some spreads I want to make before the end of the month and then these pages that we set up for April. Really fun. Just having so much fun with this so far. I feel like I've said that 10,000 times but it's the truth. So if you have made it this far let me know down in the comments what you're reading in the month of April. I'd love to know and thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you next time. Bye!